Oh, hello. I'm James with the Brains Report. And I'm here to talk to you today about the Eufy G30 Edge Robot Vacuum. Its, it's full name is the Eufy by Anchor RoboVac G30 Edge Robot Vacuum, but I'm going to shorten that a little bit. Um, just because we, we only have a limited amount of time together today. Uh, before we get started, I want to uh, encourage you to subscribe to the YouTube channel to support our work so we can provide better videos and more videos for you. Also, it helps if you just click that thumbs up uh, like thing. Uh, that's a free way for you to support us and can, can really help us to help you. So I have tested dozens of robot vacuums. Uh, I put them all through a bunch of tests and I've written about them for major publications. Uh, so I, I kind of know a thing or two about robot vacuums. Today uh, the Eufy G30 Edge, uh, it's, I don't think it's one of the best robot vacuums, but it has its uses. It's a recommendable budget option and we'll get into why that is. Uh, first let's look at what this comes with. Just take the box off here. It comes with some foam crap, some plastic. Uh, these, this is the user manual. We won't get into that right now. Instead, let's look at the extras here. Uh, bring it a little closer for you. So, here we have a cleaning tool, which is good for cleaning the brushes. Uh, there's a little razor type thing there for getting uh, hairs that might be stuck in the main brush. Uh, here's an extra uh, side brush. Comes with some uh, cable ties and some sticky stuff, I, I imagine, to secure the wire. Uh, it comes with an extra filter and it comes with uh, these two boundary strips. Now, the boundary strips uh, work kind of like the uh, DMZ between North and South Korea. It makes it so robotic vacuums can't uh, go past it. Uh, and that's why you don't see robotic vacuums going between North and South Korea. They, the DMZ is a lot like these boundary strips. So if you have like a bunch of wires that you don't want the robot vacuum running over, um, or if you have like a little uh, sand pit in your house, uh, you can uh, I'm gonna open this up for you. You can run one of these and the robot vacuum will know not to uh, go past it. As you can see it's it's pretty long. Um, not, I think it might each one is about three meters. So uh, it's plenty long and there's a sticky part on the bottom uh, that you can you can use to adhere it to actually there isn't. You, you use this electrical sticky tape stuff to stick it on the ground um, if, if you so choose. Sorry for the confusion there. I don't usually use these because I don't want uh, just these boundaries around the house. Plus I'm only using the robotic vacuums for so long. So I, yeah, I don't really, really use them that much. Okay, let's take a look at the app. Um, one thing I don't like about the, the app uh, is that you can't set the no-go zones. It has the boundary strips instead. Um, I, I prefer to be able to set them in, in the app. Um, it's just one less thing to have to keep track of. I like to simplify. There we go. Let's Take a look at this app. Um, it might be easier to see if we turn the, the ring light off here for a minute. I'm going to try that. 
Okay, so here we have the app, and it says it's charging. Uh, you can set the suction power. Let's look at what options there are. There's standard, turbo, and max. Also has boost IQ mode, which uh, automatically uh, detects uh, the surface that it's on and adjusts the, the suction power based on the surface. And cleaning, history, schedule, spot, all sorts of stuff. Let's, let's go ahead and schedule it just to show you how that works. Um, what did I do? There we go. Uh, today is Tuesday. And let's set for a couple minutes from now so that you can actually see it start. This is kind of hard to do at this angle, but we'll make it work. Uh, we're going to go standard cleaning mode. And... Let's see, where is... Sa There's save. It's one of my biggest user errors as I forget to save. So it's a pretty basic app. Um, let's see if it shows a map. Okay, it does show a little bit of a map of your home, but it you can't use, you can't draw no-go zones on that map, unfortunately. So it should start in a little bit here. Let me shine some more light on this. Now that you Oh, I also want to point out that um, this works with uh, Alexa and Google Home Assistant. So uh, if you have that set up in your home, you can just talk to it and be like, uh, Hey Alexa, go ahead and start the G30 Edge and it'll start cleaning and pretty magical. Uh, let's look at the performance. So uh, this does a a good job on hardwood and as you can see it's now starting. I don't think we're going to run it for long just so you can hear me. But yeah. And before I get into much more, but let's, let's look at the, the vacuum. It talks to you and tells you exactly what's going on. Uh, as you can see it's pretty messy on the bottom here. Um, I kind of put vacuums through heck. Uh, this main brush is about five and a quarter inches. I keep accidentally pressing buttons on the other side and so it keeps talking at me. The moral of the story is don't press buttons. Uh, the dustbin comes off and is easy to empty on your own. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and put it back on the charging dock and hopefully it'll be quiet. Okay, performance. This baby does good on hardwood. It doesn't get stuck very often. Uh, it's, but it's not very good on carpeting or in corners. Uh, to test how well it does, I put, the, I put a tablespoon of flour, a tablespoon of kitty litter, and a tablespoon of coffee grounds on 18 inch squares of carpeting and hardwood. And I also lay out a bunch of pet hairs on both surfaces. I then run the vacuum for two cleaning cycles and compare before and after pictures to determine how much the vacuum picked up. So on hardwood, it picked up all the coffee grounds and pet hairs, which suggests it might be a good option if you're opening up a coffee shop for pets. Uh, it, there was a trace of flour left over on the hardwood and about 10% of the kitty litter was left over. So didn't do as well with the kitty litter. On carpeting, again, all the coffee and pet hairs were, were sucked up. Um, again, 10% of the kitty litter was left on the carpeting and 15% of the flour was left over, which isn't that good. That's a lot of flour. Um, in the, in the corners, I put a teaspoon of flour uh, coming out about four inches from the corner on hardwood and uh, carpeting, and again, run two cycles and look at how close it gets to the corner and how much flour it picks up. On hardwood, it did a pretty darn good job. Uh, it came within about an inch and a quarter of the corner, um, which is, is very good, and it picked up 80% of the flour. 
Uh, I'm carpeting not as good. It, it only came within three inches of the very corner and it only picked up 20% of the flower. So yeah, again, not as good on carpeting. Uh, this is one of the quietest vacuums I've tested. Uh, on its high turbo mode, it's about 66 decibels. I, I measure that using a sound meter about 12 inches from the device while it's running. And that's about the sound of uh, ruckus laughter. Um, now, on quiet mode, it's among the quietest that I've tested, 58 decibels, which is quieter than normal conversation. Uh, this is also one of the smallest uh, vacuums I've tested. It's about 12 and 3 quarter inches uh, in diameter and 2 and 3 quarters inches high. Uh, this is good for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first is if you have uh, furniture with a low clearance, like let's say it's only like three inches off the ground. Uh, most robotic vacuums will not be able to get under there. Some of them may even get stuck. Uh, this one will be able to get under there and clean. Uh, the small size is also helpful for when uh, the robots become self-aware and try to attack us all. Uh, you'll be more easily able to manage a smaller vacuum and keep it from uh, destroying you and your family and everything you hold dear. So the MSRP for this is $350. At that price, I, I'd say you'd be better off going with the Bissell Spin Wave, which I'll link to in the description below. Um, that seems like a better option dollar for dollar, um, and that's one that I'm more likely to recommend in general. Uh, right now, this is selling for $230 on Amazon and it's been at that level for about a month. Uh, at $230, I think this is a really good option, uh, especially if you have low clearance furniture, uh, you mostly have hardwood, and you want something that runs quietly. Um, I think that pretty much sums up everything I wanted to cover. Uh, if you have any comments, I'm sure I forgot to cover some things, please comment below, and I will get back to you within 24 hours. And again, uh, you can really support our work and help us make more and better videos if you go ahead and subscribe. Uh, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, in the meantime, take care of yourself and if you can, take care of others. Goodbye.